Hi everyone, today we will learn about the smallest building blocks of Python, variables. Imagine you are moving to a new house and you need to pack your things in boxes. In one box, you will put your shoes. In another box, you will put your books. And big items like a coffee machine will probably need their own box. But once the boxes are closed, you can't really see what's inside them. So you will write labels such as shoes, books, and coffee machine. And that way, you know exactly what each box contains without even opening it. Now, Python variables work in a similar way. You can think of them as labels for locations in memory where we can put different kinds of data. So a chunk of memory is like a box and we give it a name so we don't have to look inside to understand what it stores. For example, we can store integers or whole numbers like 5, minus 10, or 0. We can also store floating point numbers or floats or numbers that have a dot inside them. For example, 0.5, 99.9, and even whole numbers like 1.0. We also have strings or text or more accurately, anything between a set of quotes. For example, apples, 500 bananas, and even the entire book of Genesis. Then lastly, we have Boolean, which can either be true or false. There are no other options, it's just one or the other. And this is what we call data types. They're just different categories of information, and we will see shortly why they're so important. Now, variables, in terms of code, are pairs of name and value. The name comes first, and it equals the value. So, for example, rockets equals 5, burger equals yes, and hungry equals true. But we can't just use any kind of name. There are certain words and characters that we are not allowed to use when we name variables. So, for example, if there's a keyword that already exists in Python, like import, if, for, and so on, then don't try to use it. Also, the only special character we are allowed to use is an underscore. So no dashes, no dots, and so on. Also, you can use numbers, just not in the first character. So 4K is not going to work, but D9 will. And finally, Python is case sensitive. So Batman is not the same as Batman. Okay, but what are we supposed to do with these variables? Well, there's things that we can do with integers that we can't really do with strings. For example, we all know that the square root of 25 is 5. But how are we supposed to know the square root of banana? It just doesn't make any sense. That's why we have different kinds of actions associated with different kinds of data. And to have a deeper look, we will need to learn a few new concepts. But at this point, don't worry about understanding the small detail. Just focus on the big picture instead. One category of actions is called operators, where operators are a collection of symbols like plus and minus designed to work with different kinds of data, and not just numbers. We can use the plus operator to join strings, and we can use the multiply operator to duplicate them. When it comes to Boolean, then true is translated to one, False is translated to zero, and we just treat these two like regular numbers. But operators are not the only type of action we're dealing with. We also have methods that are mostly unique for each data type. For example, we have the upper method that converts a string into uppercase. Or we have a method named bit length that tells us just how much space an integer takes in memory. We know that 25 takes only 5 bits, while 1 million takes 20 of them. But we cannot convert a number into uppercase, and we cannot directly calculate the bit length of a string. And that's why these methods are mostly unique for each data type. Another type of action is what we call functions. We can convert an integer into a float using the float function. Or 
we can find the length of a string using the len function. And most of all, we can find the data type of any variable using the type function. And as you saw earlier, knowing the type of data that we're dealing with is very important because it changes everything. Now, we've only scratched the surface when it comes to operators, methods, and functions. There are millions of other things we can do with them. And in future videos, we will dive into it in great detail. But for now, let's practice everything that we've learned today in code. So let's navigate to jupyter.org and let's scroll down and let's try it in our browser. We will then choose the Jupyter Lab instance. We will, of course, get rid of these annoying pop-ups in this file tree that we don't really need. And no, close all these things. And let's create a new Python Pyodide notebook. <sighs> Go away! Okay, now in this notebook, Python is already installed and we can use it in our workflow. So let's say that my name equals Maria. And let's say that my height equals 1.67 meters. Now, with these two variables at the very bottom, we can say my name is, to which we will add the variable name. Now, let's give it a quick run with control enter and beautiful. Our name variable was replaced with the name value, which is, of course, Maria. Now, let's quickly add my height to the mix. So right after our variable of name, we will add and I am plus height plus meters tall. Now let's go ahead and give it another run. And oh no, we get a type error because we are only allowed to add strings to other strings, where in reality, we tried adding a string to a float. So how are we supposed to solve it? Well, how about converting our float of height into a string? Now, one way we can do so is wrapping it in a set of quotes, but this is not fun. There's nothing fancy about it. So alternatively, let's wrap it in an str function that converts other data types into strings. So now that we encapsulate 1.67 in this lovely function, we can rerun this code and it will work like a charm. And great. So now that we know the basics of variables, we can move on with collections of variables, where instead of a single name, we can store a whole bunch of names. Or instead of storing the name and height separately, we can bundle them together. So. I will see you soon in the next tutorial. And in the meanwhile, bye-bye.